Welcome to Beacon. These are my picks for cards that are going to probably impact Commander the most from Phyrexial will be one. For my common pick, it's going to be Prologue to Phyresis. Reason being is it's now the cheapest way to put a poison counter on each player. Your opponents, you don't even have to put one on yourself. So like, you're no longer forced to play things like Ikor Rats, which was the only card that did this and it was a double black and a generic to do that and it put one on yourself this however cantrips it's cheaper it only puts it on your opponents so i think a lot of people are going to be excited to play this in spell slinger decks especially if you're all about looping things from your graveyard this would be almost an auto include or if you have proliferate decks most people that play atraxa aren't normally poison decks, but they'd run Icor Rats just to get that one counter on them and start the clock. Phyrexial will be one. Um, this set actually introduces three cards that do this. There are two more three drops in black that are sorcery speed. Uh, one in the commander decks, and then one I think that makes people also discard cards. I don't remember what it's called. I just know that those two are also, I think, are better than Icor Rats because it's just one black and two generic versus Icor Rats it can be a little clunky when you're playing decks with multiple colors in it. For my uncommon pick, the Veil of Assimilation. Mostly because its ceiling is extremely high. You could play this in your eggs or Cheerio decks is what they're known for. So like things that play Shu Yun, you could give it himself double strike and the prowess trigger mechanic is you play a non-creature spell it gets plus one plus one the nice thing about veil of a simulation is you could target anything so if you have a divining top a coupon and let's just say future sight or a future light sight like effect and you have three creatures you could theoretically pump them all up your your three creatures big enough to be lethal attackers on everybody in your game which is why I think this is the best. Like most of the other common uncommons don't have this kind of high ceiling effect. One of my picks for rares, it's Venerated Rot Priest. Most people think at first glance of this is, ooh, this scares people from targeting my thing. No, you, you could break that by targeting your own stuff. What first came to my mind were Selesnya Aura decks, but the two drop that every time you cast an enchantment you can trip. Flicker Ward, play them so they could get multiple cast triggers of enchantments and draw more cards off their, their engine pieces. So you pair this in that deck, you have an alternate win con other than like say Opalescence or Starfield and Nyx. Much cheaper alternative. My next rare pick, Unctus, Grand Meditect. Um, this guy is super cool. He's mostly just like a combo creature, and you could also play him as your commander, which is also nice. For instance, you'd run Intruder Alarm, and then you can use a Shrieking Drake and a Silvermer. You have Silvermer in play, you tap it for a blue, you cast Shrieking Drake, Intruder Alarm triggers, untapping your creatures. The Shrieking Drake bounces back to your hand, and you draw a card and discard and you repeat this loop until you draw your whole deck one of your three cards is also Thassa's Oracle because if you just have Shrieking Drake and Thassa's Oracle and you, you're trying to loop through your deck on two cards discard one of your combo pieces so it has to be specifically three cards but most of the rares in this set I'm not particularly excited for other than the two I mentioned because they're all very niche and they don't have high ceilings, but the two cards I just mentioned that are rares also have high ceilings. These four, they're pretty premium. Modrek, he's going to be in a lot of token decks. I think everyone's excited about that. Same with Tekuthal. Inquiry Dominus. I love the art. It makes me think of uh, Cthulhu and the guy who wrote all those books. He's pretty flexible. You don't have to exclusively play plus one plus one counter decks, you could play Super Friends. And I think he'll probably see a lot of popularity there, if not also in the plus one plus one counter themes. Drivnod, people love Death Triggers. They love it in 
Tesa. So Tesa would probably win that, and she's two colors, so you have access to a larger card pool. But like having another card, like I don't see Tesa decks not playing Drivnod because you know they get to do the thing that they love doing even more. Sophim, Ma'am, Dominus, uh, he's just a Perforos madman. People that play Perforos and he's a popular, if not the most popular, red commander in in Magic. Everybody's gonna want him in in those decks, but like just group slug decks in general that include red, this will be something people throw into their decks. These are also one of the more fairly costed ones. I hate the green one in particular because it doubles all your power of all your creatures. I don't think that's significant for seven mana because if you're doing the tall strategy that comes with expensive CMC costing creatures, you'll be stuck playing one at a turn. The commander that's doubling the power of all your creatures, you'll be lucky to be doubling more than one. You'll be probably doubling just your commander and something else. If you want that effect, then why aren't you playing Xenagos? Because A, it's two mana cheaper to play, it's more colors to play, it protects itself because it's indestructible, and if anything, that deck proves that you just only you only need one creature, just wreck face, versus this guy over here costs two more to play. You have to pay four life to make him indestructible. Uh, he's still targetable. He can be exiled by stuff, and you're not going to get a whole lot of benefit from doubling your whole board. That's why I hate that. That Phyrexian Horror in particular, he just kind of sucks. This is my second to last pick uh, in the Mythic slot. It's meant to be played in Super Friends decks because you give your Planeswalkers two additional loyalty abilities. This is the first time Magic's ever introduced a card that adds loyalty abilities. I could see this probably breaking some games. Giving your Planeswalkers the ability to proliferate or take an extra turn is pretty wild because if you have multiple planeswalkers in play you soup one up really fast by doing this uh one planeswalker proliferates if it doesn't have particularly a, an ability that's very useful i guess that that's a flexibility piece and then the thing that you really want to alt it's getting there faster and, and another flexibility is that this cares about permanence. It doesn't specifically care about planeswalkers in a in a card for three mana. That's that's the other thing. It's dirt cheap. It is so cheap to play this card. This is kind of like Inexorable Tide. You essentially get that in this three mana spell. So it's easier to cast, one blue pip, and it's cheaper. The power creep's real in this card. In terms of why it would maybe favor the uh, Super Friends decks is because it triggers on non-creature spells, and obviously Planeswalkers are non-creature spells. Most Super Friends decks, they are rife with board wipes. Rarely you get that kind of effect where you get to advance your own board and stall everyone else at the same time. Speaking of advancing your game and stalling everyone else, uh, we get to my final card, which is probably not going to be a surprise. Elish Norn. Now, fun facts about Praetors. Uh, this is actually a, it's a Roman title that was awarded to uh, figureheads that both commanded an army and hold a, a government position in a magistrate. That's two very polarizing jobs for one person. One, you're waging war, and then two, you're promoting prosperity for your people, or that's what you're expected to do. I just think flavor-wise it's really cool. Even the original ones had an effect that inhibited what your opponent was doing, so you're waging war, and then promoted your own board state. Cards sits head and shoulders above everything else. I chose this art because this one is personally my favorite. It kind of maintains the elegance of Elish Norn. It's a one-sided stacks effect. Those are rare. Normally people have to build their decks to be asymmetrical and they have to build around their stacks pieces so that they don't affect themselves as much. But like Elish Norn, you, you don't care. You can throw this in any white deck. Most people compare it to 
Panharmonicon, but Panharmonicon only triggers on artifacts and creatures entering, while this triggers on every permanent entering the battlefield. This thing triggers on even lands. I don't know if people notice that when they first look at it, but it does. At the same fact, it prevents permanence on your opponent's side of the field from triggering effects. The only other card that denied land triggers is Strict Proctor, and that's it affects you too. You're getting a better Pan Harmonicon and a better Strict Proctor in every sense of the way. The other thing that like sucks about Hate Bearers is that you never want to block with them. You're just taking a beating all game long because everybody wants your your stacks piece or your hate bear off the table. Not only do you get to beat on someone for four damage every turn on combat, you have that thick toughness down here. There are very few hate bears with a toughness above three. Thanks for listening to me talk. I hope people that crack packs get to open these cards that I think will change commander in the biggest way. Have a good night. Bye.